I would say maybe my first mentor mm-hmm. was my next door neighbor okay. in Crescent Hills, yeah. Mrs. Gracie, and she was a teacher. And she used to, she used to um, practice with me the things she was going to do with students in her classes. So I would do these little educational games and learn that I could, I was good at them. Uh, and she encouraged me. So someone who kind of makes you see yourself differently and makes you understand your potential, that's where it started. So she was the first friend teacher that I had. Um, another person who is my mentor um, to this day is uh, one of my former bosses, her Pam Fisher, who is, she lives in um, Montana now. But um, Dr. Fisher was my chancellor uh, when I worked at Columbia College, part of the Yosemite Community College District in Northern California, actually Central California. And Pam has stayed with me and given me uh, guidance uh, along my career. And one of the things she said to me uh, after an incident, this was a tough situation that I had to deal with with a, a colleague that I supervised. And it disturbed me, the, the situation that I had to manage through this was very disturbing to me. And uh, I was emotional about it. And Pam said to me, Catherine, you've got to get a thicker skin. And I asked her, why did, why did people have to be so mean, yeah. mean-spirited? Uh, because this is one of the, the situations I had to deal with had to do with someone just being mean um, uh, for, no, for what I felt was no reason. Mm -hmm. And Pam said, you have to get a thicker, get a thicker skin because you will not be able to please everyone. And everyone is not going to do things in the way that you think they should. And I think I have developed that thicker skin, but I also believe I've maintained my sense of uh, being, being, um, my sense of humanity. Yeah. Uh, my ability to be compassionate, my ability to make the tough decisions, but at the same time, um, not necessarily be a hard ass about it. Yeah. Uh, and to um, not take the authority that's invested in my position, that that's vested with my position, um, not to take it. Uh, too seriously, or to use it in ways that um, are ego-driven. I've maintained a good sense of self. Yeah, and that was not just from um, the lessons I learned in how to be a good person in in, in the household. You know, things lessons from my mother and father. Uh, Percy and Esther Jeffrey, but also from um, the lessons that I learned at church. You know, religion used to be a catalyst in in homes, not as much these days as it used to be. Um, We even have arguments about what's what's the truth. Uh, Now there are schools of study around what's, what is the truth. Uh, and all of these things, even religion, these are constructions. And the constructions vary based on where you live in the world and uh, what time period uh, you, you um, experience in your life. Um, and I've become a much more critical thinker around so many different topics. Because I was able to soak up what I learned here, but also to venture beyond here. Uh, This was a great launch pad for me. Uh, It has been a great launch pad for many other people. Um, And ironically, I, I live in a community where Will Rogers Park uh, is just 
literally uh, across the street yeah. from where I am. So I have one of Oklahoma's favorite sons uh, in terms of what he was able to accomplish in his life just very nearby. So I'm never far from someone who has Oklahoma ties yeah. because the or uh, either a person who's still living or a person whose impact is felt in the community. Yeah. I've been real fortunate. Even when I first moved to Sacramento and was working in residence halls at, at Sac State, California State University, Sacramento, one of the students who came to check into the dorm yeah. was the daughter of a sixth grade teacher from Creston Hills. And Mr. Smith, Mrs. McGlon was my teacher. Mr. Smith had the other group of sixth graders. Yeah. And when the young lady checked in and her mother and uh, was asking me where I was from, I said, I'm from Oklahoma City. And she said, oh, my father taught in Oklahoma City at Crescent Hills. I'm like, really? And she described her dad, and I couldn't quite put it together. And she says, I want you to come to my house for Thanksgiving. And I went to have dinner with the Smiths. And as soon as I walked in the door, I recognized Mr. Smith. It was like, whoa. It was, I, I really, it took me all the way back to yeah. being on the playground at, at, at Crescent Hills. Yeah. And Mr. Smith said, Catherine Jeffrey, I do not believe this. He knew me. Yeah. And he told his daughter when she related to him that I was from Oklahoma City and had gone to Crescent Hills, he says, I know who she is. You tell her I want you to invite her for Thanksgiving, and when she comes, we're going to re And sure enough, it was a wonderful time to reconnect. So I have never in my whole career been far away from someone who was connected to Oklahoma City. Yeah, that's amazing yeah. to have that, right? You never would have guessed that. You I never, never, know. never, and also never. To have that never. friendship community come over Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, and so I watched over his daughter yeah. and her roommate during their uh, entire time at at our California State University. Uh, there was that connection. It, it felt like family. Right. Uh, for for them to be in my dorm. I think could have checked into any dorm. Right. You know, what were the chances that they would check into my dorm? Yeah. 